Hello everyone, I think many people watching have eaten such a Nutella and go. We open up the pack, and we see crispy sticks that need to be dipped in chocolate paste. Pretty cool stuff. Today we will make exactly the same, only bigger. To do this, we will need a lot of nuts. They're raw now. Therefore, we open them and scatter all the nuts onto baking sheets. Then we send this all out to the oven. We will roast them at 200 degrees in convection mode. Thanks to this, the nuts will become many times more fragrant. After 20 minutes, we go and get them. Sometimes the hazelnut shell can be bitter, but I tried and everything's fine with these nuts and it's pointless to peel them. Therefore, for convenience, we simply pour them into bowls. Nutella also needs sugar, milk chocolate, cocoa, and salt. We collect 800 grams of nuts and pour them into a blender. Also add four tablespoons of milk chocolate, the same amount of sugar, two tablespoons of cocoa, and salt for balance. We cover everything up with a lid and install on the mixer. We crushed the whole mass for 40 minutes until it turned into a paste. Now we transfer it to a custom-made container. The blender wasn't good enough for a second portion of the Nutella, and it broke. Therefore, we will have to change the cooking technology a little bit. We install a meat grinder into the mixer, pour nuts into the saucer, and grind them. And we meet through a really fine grid. Thus, we pass all the hazelnuts through it, and pour 800 grams of already crushed nuts into the melange. This includes sugar, chocolate, and salt. While we wait half an hour until it grinds all into a paste. We shift the Nutella into a mold and load the next portion. Later we made a double portion of once and brought the paste to such a super smooth consistency. We cooked Nutella all day until we filled out the form. Our paste is made. It remains to cook large sticks. We'll have to bake them in our big oven. But first we'll chop some wood and make a fire.
We push the firewood into the oven and let it warm up. For the dough, pour three liters of 330 milliliters of water. There is also quite a lot of salt, sugar, and dry yeast. Pour one kilogram of flour and mix with a whisk until the dough becomes homogenous. We wait half an hour for the yeast to work and add four kilograms of flour. Knead the dough with a spatula. Pour in 300 milliliters of oil and knead it with your hand. Now cover it up with a film. Literally half an hour in the sun and it has risen pretty good. We mince it a little bit. And again covered up with the film. Do not forget to throw firewood so that the stove continues to heat up. The dough is ready. We tear off a part of it and put it on the scales. Each stick will weigh 850 grams. We dust the tip with the flour. Our dough is on it. We stretch it and spread it out with our hands. We turn it up and pinch it until we form such a long stick. We fold it three times. And with the help of a spatula, we transfer it to a huge baking sheet. We return the dough to its previous form. We make a fold in the parchment and we prop it all up with a towel. Thus, we form five strips of dough. Meanwhile, the stove has warmed up pretty well. Break the coals to the sides. Inside the stove, we need to raise the humidity. Therefore, we fill up a balloon with water. Tighten the lid. And pump the air, creating pressure. And now we spray water evenly on the hot bricks from this spray gun. Dough sticks have already risen. They need to be stretched out on the baking sheet. We trim it a little bit with our hands. And push it into the oven. We close it with two lids. And after half an hour, we open it back up. The first batch of huge sticks with Nutella is ready. Let's make another one. In my opinion, the second batch turned out even more beautiful. An enlarged copy of the Nutella box was made to order for us. Shake the can of primer and cover the box with it. After that, we blow everything out with brown paint. We transfer the box to the studio, arm ourselves with acrylic paints, brushes, and rollers. Now we need white paint. 
We draw borders with a brush. And we make a white background with a roller. We draw the outline of the inscriptions with a pencil. And we decorate it off. Done. We insert our Nutella mold into the box. As well as the huge sticks. Hey everybody, I think many people know sweets like Ferrer Rocher. We decided to make one such candy, but of gigantic size. Let's see what's inside it first. It has chocolate with nuts on the outside, then a crispy layer, chocolate paste and hazelnuts. Everything's clear. To begin with, we will buy the groceries we need. We bought milk chocolate, a lot of sugar, two boxes of cocoa powder, two boxes of butter, five kilograms each. We don't need anything else in the store. So we go to the checkout. Our check came out to $190. We also bought a bag of crispy rice, 10 kilograms of peanuts, and a bag of hazelnuts to order. All this cost around $136. We decided to use such large iron cauldrons as molds. For convenience, we bend the fasteners and remove the handles. We turn the cauldrons over, wrap them with cling film. To make a crispy layer, we'll use the rice. It's as crispy as possible. To get that to stick together, we'll make a caramel. We send half a can of corn syrup into a saucepan, six kilograms of sugar. We put that on the stove. Be sure to use a candy thermometer. The temperature needs to reach 146 degrees. Pour out the airy rice and mix that into the caramel. We'll pour this whole mass on top of the mold and try to stick it to the whole cauldron. And this is where it all went wrong. The caramel cooled down really quickly and it's falling apart and it doesn't hold its shape at all. And so this is difficult to call these cauldrons normal forms. We decided to redo everything. We ordered acrylic semicircles. We opened them up. And take them out. I think that this is perfect. So to keep everything from sticking to the molds, we spray with oil from a can onto the inner walls of the circle. This time to get the rice to stick, we'll use marshmallows. We put two packs in a bowl and put that into the microwave. They melted down pretty well. It turns out the consistency of an elastic cream. We put the air rice in the same bowl. Combine all this with a spatula. We're left with a viscous mass, and I think we'll be fine with it. Spray some oil onto your gloves so that the marshmallow doesn't stick and send this mass into the bowl. Now distribute it all around the form. And we continue to do this until we cover the inner walls completely. Done. The next stage is the chocolate paste inside. We take two boxes of butter, take them out, and put two sticks into a saucepan. We put it on the stove so that it melts. And done. Now we need a lot of condensed milk. This one we have left after the last video. We need peanuts and cocoa. Put the blender bowl on the scales. And put 300 grams of peanuts into it. Two tablespoons of cocoa. We open two cans of condensed milk. and pour those in as well. Me, 
And last but not least, 200 grams of butter. Cover that with the lid and put it into the blender and turn it on. We grind this until we get a homogenous mass. The consistency of the paste, like Nutella, is quite dense. Using a spatula, we shift the paste into the bowl. We keep repeating this from time to time. And after about six hours of work, the condensed milk, butter, and almost all the nuts are finished. And the forms are even less than half full. I had to buy all the groceries again. We continue making the chocolate paste. Now, once the forms are completely filled, it took eight hours. And finally, this stage is finished. The next layer is the whole nut. We need to make two huge halves of hazelnuts. We'll use a lot of this nut. Now, the hazelnuts are raw and don't really smell. To fix this, pour it into two baking sheets. And pop them in the oven. Let them warm up for 20 minutes to release their fragrance. To hold the nuts together, we'll cook another caramel. The composition is exactly the same. Corn syrup, a packet of sugar, and water. Pop all that on the stove, and be sure to use a candy thermometer. As soon as it's 145 degrees, we take out the finished nuts and put them into the saucepan. Mix them well with the caramel. We move this over to a bowl, which is the same shape as our hemisphere. Done. As soon as the caramel is hardened, we remove the bowl and tear off the parchment paper. We're left with a perfect half of a huge nut, or rather two. Just put them in the middle of the mold into the chocolate paste. We spread the paste with a spatula so that there's a layer of the same height everywhere. Now this candy is very soft, and if you take it out of the mold, it'll just fall apart. So we send these semicircles into the freezer. That's where they're cooled down, and the chocolate filling will become dense. Two days later, and the candy is completely cooled. Before you get to it, you need to prepare a lot of things. First, make the packaging. We bought this kind of packaging gold paper. To repeat the design, we crush it with our hands. Then we straighten it back. We unwind the double-sided tape and glue on another sheet. We have six in total, and we want to combine them into a huge one. Done. This second stage. For our future outer layer, you need to add nuts. Everything is simple. Put them into a blender, and crush until you get like an average fraction. Pour that into another bowl. The third preparatory stage. We take a chocolate bar, open it, and break it. We fill the whole bowl with these pieces. Now we'll melt this in a steam bath. It decreases in volume, so we break more. And that's it. We can have a bowl of hot chocolate. Now for last. Make some more chocolate paste in order to glue the halves together. We need to wrap the table well with cling wrap. Finally, you can bring the chilled halves back for the candy. 
We cut off the protruding air rise. Turn the form over. That's one half. Now for the second one. Thank God everything went well and nothing cracked. Spread all this over with a layer of chocolate. The easiest way is to pour the chocolate directly from the later and spill it with a spatula. Now sprinkle the crushed nuts on top until they stick to the whole candy. And we put another layer of chocolate on top of that. We mix it with the nuts directly with the spatula so that it looks just like the original. Done. It turned out perfectly. And we repeat all this for the second half. As soon as the chocolate is frozen, we cut the food foam off and put one half onto a board. Remove the cling wrap and apply the chocolate paste to glue the candy halves together. We put the second one on top Everything is almost ready. And I feel like this is just as similar as possible to the original small version. So let's seal it. Due to the fact that this is paper, not foil, it turned out not very smoothly. And so the final touch is the sticker. Finally, after four days of hard work, our giant Ferrero Rocher candy weighing 100 kilograms is ready. I feel like it turned out really well. I calculated its cost. Taking into account of all the additional purchases, it turned out to be $940. Let's cut off a piece. And let's try it. Oh, that is good. It really reminds me of the original taste of the candy. By the way, I have a deal for you. If this video gets 200,000 likes within three days, then we'll do another super large scale video that will be released on the weekend. I know that this will happen, you guys. I highly recommend that you do this. Who cares where we put this candy? We're just gonna use the machete to cut it into pieces. After that, we wrap it with cling wrap. And in this form, we'll send it to the people that helped us make it, as well as our relatives. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on this playlist. There are so many more videos with giant food. See you guys.